So 18,671 would equate to 104 passenger jets going down, crashing, so to speak, every two or so days. Hello, thanks for joining me. Late last week, the ABS published the all-cause mortality data for Australia through to the end of August. We'll come to that in a moment, but before we do so, I just want to give you another figure. During World War II, the four or so years of World War II, Australia suffered close to 40,000 military casualties. About 39,800, I think, was the published figure. So let's call it 40,000. 40,000 military casualties through the whole war. The figure that's been published just this week by the ABS shows a percentage of 17, 17%. Now, if you recall, it's been going up 16.1, 16.6, 17.1, 17.3, and now it's just come back just a tad to 17% even. So people say, well, 17%, it's levelled off. The point is that that's an astonishingly high figure. It's a really high figure. It's normally 2 or 3% for context. Might go down one year, up a little bit more, 2 3%, but it's running at 17%. So we're saying 17%, we're just using that as a percentage and we're easily uh, comfortable with that figure after a while. I sense a bit of kind of um, almost a passivity around that now. But this is an extraordinarily high figure and it's consistent with other countries like the UK and so on and in Europe and, uh, and, and Ireland and so on. So 16, 19, 20, some of the European countries are even higher, but we're trending up. It's leveled for the moment, but it's 17%. The point is, these are lives. These are lives. And it actually equates to, in terms of excess mortality, around about 18,671 extra lives that were not projected to be ending in this year. So this figure is through to the end of August 22, eight months, and it's 18,671. Now to give you some further context, what does that look like? These are people, right? These are human beings that were not projected, not expected to have their lives ended, lost lives in this year. Excess mortality. It could look like an A320 jet. An A320 jet, passenger jet, carries 180 people when fully loaded, 180 people. So 18,671 would equate to 104 passenger jets going down, crashing, so to speak, every two or so days. So in the eight months this year, we've had in Australia, figuratively, a jet, an A320 jet, going down with 180 people on board every two or so days. And yet, the silence is deafening. There's hardly anybody talking about this in the main media. If we had one jet go down, there would be a furor. We've had 104. 104 jets go down with 18,671 lives. Most of the people dying are 75 years and over. So the figure is actually around about 68% over 75 years. That's not surprising really because we have an ageing population. So we have a lot of people getting older in this country and we ha now have a lot of people dying in this country uh, over 75 years. So 68% over 75. There are signs of, of, of in younger cohorts uh, of an increasing mortality as well. Working age people, that has repercussions, economic repercussions, family repercussions, community repercussions. You know, we're getting an incredible spike in dementia and diabetes, 20% for both of them, diabetes and dementia, both increasing 20, 21%. Diabetes, dementia, cancer and heart, they're the four major causes of death. And as I say, most people over 75, but now increasing. And in Europe, the 0 to 14 is exploding at about three, four, 500% even in some, some locations. So there's a shift to our younger groups. It's starting to happen in Australia. It's not that dramatic yet but it's starting to move and that has some implications for economy especially, but it also has implications for the health system, in particular the health system, which is particularly stressed and under duress. In WA, there's a nurses strike, they're trying to avert. In New South Wales, there's a strike. Uh, in Victoria, they're losing 200, 200 nurses per week and um, giving some cash incentives for them to, to join in after graduation. So that's a system under duress. And in fact, the ABS put out a report also last week, a separate report, 
saying, uh, you know, showing that people are waiting uh, more than 24 hours to see a doctor. It was up about 33%. 39% of people are now waiting to see a doctor and they're waiting for 24 hours. Some went to emergency, couldn't see anybody. So this has implications. If the health system is under pressure here because more people are getting sick and some of them are eventually dying, then that is causing stress on the hospital and health system and on the workers, obviously. And we're seeing ambulance ramping all around the country. So there are implications here for, for the bureaucrats and for the health system and for economy and community, as I've been mentioning. If you go back to World War II, the people behind me here who fought and gave their lives, there was almost 40,000, as I say. Well, so far this year, we've got 18,000 plus, and by the end of the year, you could project that it might be around 24, 25,000 people. So what that means is in about a year and a half, 18 months, if that trend line continued, in about a year and a half, we would have had as many casualties, so to speak, as we in, in, incurred in the whole four years of World War II. Now, we've been tracking this since earlier in the year, and I said that in about May or June, we should start to see, based on the information that I was uh, getting and the research that I was doing, we should start to see a lift in, in all-cause mortality in this country. And that's precisely what happened. If you look at the chart, that's precisely what happened. And I've also said that around about November, December, we will probably see a further increase in percentage. We're right at 17 now. The high water mark this year has been 17.3. I'm suggesting it might go to 18, 18.5%. Now we won't know that figure because there's a lag period because of the ABS data is reporting here in August. So the November, December won't come through till early in 23. And that's in part because of uh, doctor certification and coroner's report, but also the, the lag effect of the ABS aggregating the data and reporting it. So in about January or February, we should start to see uh, November, December data coming through and I'm projecting that this will actually go up as a percentage, 18.5%, something like that. So all-cause mortality is the gold standard, as Jerry Renick has said, and it's trending up, but it's real lives, and this country cannot afford to lose its best people. The moment it's 75 and plus, and that, you know, no one wants to see their, their grandfather or grandmother or their cousin or whatever die, and you must be hearing reports of this because we hear it almost every other day. We'll be tracking this going forward. I, it'll be interesting to see in November, December uh, data what the trend line and what the stats reveal. But uh, if you've got access to uh, representatives, political representatives, you want access to people in the medical fraternity, please encourage them to make some inquiry and to try and understand what is causing the biggest, the most acute increase in mortality since World War II. Thanks for watching.